enthusiasts of music, fashion, LGBTQAI+, male portraiture, or specifically Adam Lambert, might really enjoy these works. Shown are clockwise from top right. What do you want from me, Adam? Planet Fierce, Adam. Purple Haze, Adam. Dandy, Adam. November and Angel Adam. At least 10% of profit from sales of these prints will be donated to the Feel Something Foundation. The more you help Cat the Minion Energy Work grow, our collective donations to charity can increase. My link tree, linktr.ee slash Cat the Minion, gives you easy access to my DeviantArt print shop. You can get prints of any of these in my DeviantArt shop just by clicking on them, and when you get to the individual page, click the Buy From button. Once you click on the button, you can select from the print menu various fine art prints with optional framing or small art gifts like mugs, postcards, and magnets. Thanks for raising money to help others. The video you're here to watch starts now. All right, welcome patrons of Shadow Tear. And if you're popping in from Uncertainty or Woo, what's up? So, the pick a pile this month, I've got four piles, and we're doing my triangulation reading. Um, so, the first pile, whether I read them in that order or not, we'll see. I have, you can choose by the Uno deck with the Wild Unknown Animal Spirits, and the pile marker. It's not this cup behind it, it's this little ceramic baby spoon with a kitty cat. Somebody maybe by accident mailed that to me with I think like a doll outfit that I bought and because it looked like my cat Shadow I was like kitty and when I forgot to bring a spoon upstairs a couple times I've eaten chocolate chips with it just because I needed something but anyway that's the pile marker for this and this next pile, I have the Kaleidos Nebula playing cards with the Elemental Hexagons deck, which is sort of a tarot. It's like a combo oracle and tarot deck. And the marker is this, I think it's a dec decanter? Diffuser. There we go. A tea diffuser but it's a sloth. So you put the tea in his butt and then dunk him in the water. I'm gonna put him back together here. And then dunk him in the water and then your your tea leaves don't get all over the place. So this pile is the sloth. And the pile over here we have my historical fashion playing cards, which I usually have shuffled in with another deck, but they're separate today. And my phrase deck that I made, paraphrasing from books and magazines and manuals and stuff like that. Okay, The pile marker for this, I just have to make sure it's zoomed in properly here. is, oh my skin looks horrible, is this little nicely shaped teardrop piece of sea glass that I've had since I went on a field trip when I was in third grade. I mean, essentially it's a piece of a beer bottle. Um, but it's been smoothed by the, I'm just trying to get this to focus properly. I think that's about as good as that's going to get. Flip it over. Um, so it looks like a little gemstone, but it's really just really just a piece of a bottle. It's a really nice minty green color. So that's the pile marker for this, my teardrop sea glass. Sorry if this makes you nauseous. i got to get back out here. And the fourth pile is 
a pinnacle card deck. I've got this labeled for twin flame muse, so one half is labeled masculine and the other is feminine. We're not going to worry about that too much, so pinnacle deck. And I've got the lover's oracle here for that. So it may come out a love reading, it may not, but those are the decks that I was called to. So the pile marker for this is the ceramic llama, which was Susan's original home. That's my plant. Um, but she got too big, so there's just a needle in there right now because I happened to throw it in there. So you have this wide body ceramic llama for this pile. Okay, so that's what you're choosing from. So I'm going to um, shuffle the cards out while you're thinking about that. And you can watch the whole thing or part. And the reason I'm shuffling them out on camera is because it's a paid thing. When I do the free ones on YouTube, it's not always gonna. Okay, it's not always gonna. I'm not always gonna shuffle them out on camera. That one almost popped out. It's nice of them to fall out in the way that they need to lay on the thing. Excuse me from having to think about it. I wasn't going to just lay them out, but since it's doing that, to make sure I leave the cards in the right slots. Okay, so start with this one. I'm going to leave these in the position that they need to be in so I don't lose that. Normally I leave these upside down because they are slightly harder to read that way. Come on, I just need one more. Uno más. Uno más. Okay. Just leave that upside down so I can pretend that I can't read it right now. These ones are too odd shaped to put a rubber band around. So just put them back in the box for now. Okay, so that one's ready. On the other left, Dick. There's my little thing there. I'm gonna be so mad if that gets fucked up. It's like forced to dig around in my jewelry box for it because my brain told me I had to get the little piece of sea glass. Sea glass, Jen. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's start with that one. different colors of these cards don't mean anything. It just happened to be what came with the envelopes that I bought for my chapbook bags. This one. I'll leave these on the bottom because they felt they. if I have to get more cards then I might dip into that. It usually goes with the Tim Burton cards. But I had them separated because apparently I had them separated from last time I used them. Okay, so we'll get the elemental hexagons for the sloth. Or sloth, I guess, depending on what where you're from. So one. sideways, so we'll leave that one in that position. Okay. 
Okay, this one is trying to... No, I guess this one. Learned that these go in here better if I put the middle in and then mm -hmm. so it doesn't break all the little tabs on the outside. Okay, I've got a double here. Oh, I've got a triple here. All right, this one came by itself, so I'm gonna take that one. This one's on the top in case I need any more. This last pile here. Okay. That one's sideways. These were so old. Like 35 years old, these cards. Shuffle them back in and see what comes out. One. Okay, that one flipped around. We'll take that one. That was his itchy. My hair is attacking me. to switch batteries. Right. So I'm going to read the sloth pile first, but first I'm going to change the battery in my camera. Okay, so we're at the sloth pile. I've got the intro card here, so we're going to see what the issue is that we're working on. I turn it over neatly. So we have Krypton in the shape of a Mayan. Person. Gumby. Hidden weakness. Periodic table noble gla noble noble glasses, because I ne need them to read. 36 Krypton. Isn't that Superman's home planet? Why is he allergic to it? That's weird. Hidden weakness. But sort of an open secret. It gives me like sort of like, ooh, blondes are my only weakness, and everybody knows it, and they can use it as a weapon against you. But it's up to you to 
sort of resist it. So if you think of a noble gas, it's sort of complete, and in order to attach something to it, you have to break it energy off of it. So it's sort of like you your weakness can be weaponized against you, but only if people wear you down first. Interesting. Okay. So let's look at the past. Nine of Cups. This indicates things are, are going pretty swimmingly. Like I'm feeling pretty content. I'm doing all right. Like it feels pretty good. Feeling all right. But then we have, in the present, we have Three of Swords inverted. Now three is the root of nine. If I take three swords inverted, it's very much like three cups inverted. It's saying, like, I was sad, but I'm not sad now. Like, I have, my heart isn't broken anymore. Which is weird because the past things seem fine. Now if I'm to say that this is a inverted acting like a three of cups because I see the heart and the spade inverted look like each other and I say that the energy for three of swords is Saturn in Libra when the three of cups would be Venus in Cancer so I'm coming up with a different energy than I would normally the Nine of Cups energy is Jupiter in Pisces. And it looks to me like this probably has something to do with the planets that are retrograde right now. And honestly, I haven't looked them up for September. I haven't needed to. And I don't think I'm going to. To just say that there's, even if there's a, an inverted card, it's going to tell me retrograde energy anyway. It is sort of like the past was ignoring the energy of heartbreak. But in the present, there seems to be a root issue of like a celebration isn't in the right energy, which is a little bit weird. Let me see what the future card is. Marked it over. Looks so good too. Six of Wands in the challenge position. All of the future cards are a challenge. The victory card. Jupiter in Leo. So I have two cards with Jupiter on them. Sagittarian energy. Sagittarian energy looks... Let me get this because I've got it over here. Looks like an arrow. And it's an expansive energy. All of the wands are expansive. The... Uh... The... Aries energy is, you know, a circle with an arrow attached to it. It's anchored in place. It looks like a skip it, if you're old enough to remember. Um, the... Like, round and round we go. How many times can you jump over it? Leo energy sits in one place and just radiates out in all directions. But the Sagittarius energy is like, you know, like... I'm taking the energy and it's going over there. I'm, you know, I'm sailing through the air and dropping, kind of like how trees drop their seeds, especially the little um, wingnut ones where they spin in the air and then they, they go. Or like birds will eat the seeds and then they'll fly great distances and then they'll crap out the seeds without digesting them and they've planted a whole forest. 
that's the kind of energy that you're getting from Sagittarius. These cards look really good, but why is the present having this, this shady, like, pretending to be happy energy? Because the past looks like it's happy, but even though a nine isn't, a nine isn't like a 10, it's not like I'm complete. It's like things are going pretty good and I'm feeling well chuffed. Like I'm, I'm pretty happy. But there is something missing. If I had 12 cups, I'd be the knight of cups. I'd be really rolling in it. But we have this weakness here. Like one, it's like if I have a three-legged table and one of the legs gets wobbly, the whole table's gonna go. Let me see what the wrap-up energy is. Calcium. There's your body good. Try to get this to focus. Naked lady! Hey, lady! Female energy, the empress. So that's another three, but it's a higher vibration. This was a slightly rotated, too. It's coming in with the number 20. This is number 36, and I see, ooh, I think it's 369 pattern. Trying to be in flow with the universe. But then I have 20, which is judgment energy. Calcium carbonate for your Tim Tim. But it's also like shells buried in the strata. This is vexing me a little bit. And I don't really want to get into having a lot more cards. But I think... Which deck am I using? I want to find out a little bit more information about the Three of Swords. So Jack of Swords, which could be the page, or in this case, because I have this 369 thing, I think it's going to be the Knight. So the Knight of Swords is in a hurry. Fast acting, ten acting over here. Why is the Three of Swords acting like Kryptonite? This is really not supposed to have this many cards, but I think I think because it's a hidden weakness is why it's being more difficult. So I have a card in the challenge position, which is the Ten of Cups, which we already knew. Like, I can't get there. I can't get there from here. Ten going into twenty. So what is the point? Let me clarify this with some other information. The King of Cups also in the challenge position. It's not... It, there's... Okay, so what's going on here is that there's confusion based on, like, secrets. Oh, okay. It looks too good to be true, so there must be something toxic about it. Okay. Okay. Somebody's been making me really happy in the recent past. And I could be all the way happy and get things going in a hurry. But I'm so used to there being an Achilles heel situation in every situation that I'm waiting for the bottom to drop out. The issue here, though, is this noble gas energy. I'm also seeing calcium, like if something is calcified, it's frozen. It's sort of like I'm afraid that the female energy is going to 
uh, sneak in at night and cut my hair on me. You know? I'm afraid that the feminine energy is... trying to like cut my nads off or something it's like um it's 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 like i've been swayed in the past and sort of tripped on contentment because everything was fine and then i was like wait a minute what happened before this might get fucked up too and it's sort of like giving up before. Bef it's like giving up before you get there because it's like, well, why should I even bother trying to get it if it's, if the wind's gonna come out of my sails anyway? Any other metaphor will do. It's very. Um, it looks like like a uh, like hot time gonna happen fast like i have to get to you i love you like i need you i want you but it's i'm struggling to overcome the situation but we see that it's three of the three of swords this even even with this backup swords it's a a mental issue it's like i'm psyching myself out and we find out, really, that the hidden weakness isn't necessarily other people. It's, I'm my own worst enemy. It's sort of like, I've got knots in my stomach, I need some Tums. Like, I had the butterflies and... And I treated it with Pepsid. And I wasn't really upset, it was something in my own mind, and now all my butterflies have drowned. So, it's very emotional, but it's also, I've, I again, it's like I've psyched myself out. It was like a fear of losing power. Um, a fear of showing like mortality right I don't want to appear less than amazing and if I'm not amazing all the time they're not gonna like me so I better fuck off and again it could also be like I got this far with someone else like way in the past and it screwed me over and I forgot and then as soon as I started getting happy it triggered this like oh shit and then run away run away even though there wasn't anything nefarious going on so that's what i'm seeing here with the sloth so think of it that way taking a long time to get there but we see that whoever is picking the sloth is having um an argument with themselves between uh like fear-based trauma psyching themselves out in this sort of intense emotional and passionate connection okay so i'm going to go on to the kitty cat pile over here all right so we have the kitty cat pile with the uno and the wild unknown spirit animal deck so the starter card which i'm i guess i'm just leaving in the challenge position we have the peacock Now, if I remember correctly, the description in the book says the peacock has been through a lot of stuff and sort of gradually unfolded. It's also giving me, like, um... It is giving me, um, solar chakra energy, like I've been able to stomach a lot. I don't know what they're going on in their gizzard there, but it's giving me that. I mean, we also have the standard, like, cock of the walk thing. Like, ooh, look at me. But we are in the challenge position. That's like I'm trying to, it's a little bit like I'm trying to overcome something. It's also a little bit like I'm trying to move up in the world. I'm trying to get noticed. I'm trying to find my place. I'm trying to attract the right kind of people. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven with air energy. So we do have potentially seven of swords energy, which is sort of like a ninja thief energy. But if I'm having it in the challenge position, it sort of it does sort of give me more of an energy of like trying to find out what belongs to me. Sort of in the same vein as a four of pentacles can, but it's more of it's more of a an internal thing. It's more of a what fulfills me like like who am I to me not like what physical stuff am I able to get rid of in my material world okay so let's get the past seven of cups inverted now seven this is the same information because seven of cups is the like bunch of stuff in different cups like a dragon and a castle and fruit and a brain or some whatever jewels and shit um a lot of people say it's options but for me it's usually distractions but it can be illusions right so i know my heart so in the past i started to become disillusioned with what i thought i wanted and this is where this, like, where where the hell am I kind of energy comes in. Who am I now? So I have five of swords inverted in the present. This is, this is also similar. Five of swords is the mind games. It's also the last man standing on the battlefield. It's like... It's a little... It's kind of like seven of wands, but here it's sort of like I'm... I'm not going to fight for this anymore, this sort of rat race ideal that wasn't even mine to begin with. Like I'm not no longer going to be fighting for this paradigm or social construct that's been messing with my head. I'm going to see together this energy is 12, which is a little bit hanged, man. It's kind of like waking up this future card okay so we have the ace of cups in the challenge position so i mean it's sort of a natural flow too because in the like if you're giving up this what you thought you wanted was the right thing to do that like you thought you were supposed to do then the challenge would be to find what what is the truth that matches in your heart chakra like like what fulfills me you know the peacock is like who am i where are my people like i want to be seen for me like i'm not some little like mouse automaton working in the cubicle i'm like la la ta da like it, it me you know it's like a grand entrance but but it's like finding out who you are and then following what this newly opened concept of you is and that's going to be by trusting your heart because if it hurts you emotionally if it makes you feel sad and tightens up your guts then you know it's not for you so let's look at the outcome the nightingale okay this makes sense too i'm getting a little bit uranus energy here we have one, two, three four five six seven 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 of air, which would be like the page. Which I did sign Uranus energy. I mean, it could be Neptune, but it's giving me more Uranus with Aquarian energy, which would be this a little bit too. But it doesn't really matter. Okay. So there's a, a folk story about the Nightingale. Um... And I don't know if it's like originally a Chinese story or not, but essentially the emperor um, is like, I think he's like outside in his garden one day and he hears this bird and he's like, oh, what's that? Like, I need it. And the, the courtiers can't find it. And it, it turns out that some like scullery maid that has to like walk up to the castle every day that doesn't live there 
uh, goes by the forest and knows where the nightingale lives. So she like takes him to the nightingale and then they bring it to the emperor and they keep the bird in a cage. And the nightingale is so special because it sings a different song every time. Um, you know, and then the emperor of Japan sends him a golden nightingale and they're like, oh, this is so much better. It's so fancy. But it only plays the same song every time. So meanwhile, the nightingale is like fucked off somewhere. And the emperor is like dying because he's so sad that the real nightingale is gone. And then in the end, they sort of make up and it's all fine and everything. But the point is, you will be ultimately be recognized for your uniqueness and the inability to replace this sort of special thing that belongs to you in some way. Right? I mean, a lot of people can do the same job, but they're not going to do it in the same way. They're not going to have the same perspective. Um, that's sort of the point of, of diversity. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's like, um, There's this sort of like the randomness and the ability for things to mutate in the universe is how new things become created. So it is, in essence here, it's saying it's learning how to trust yourself to be creative and know that where you'll, you'll ultimately be appreciated for what is unique to you personally. Okay, so that's that's what there is. These don't have to be hugely long. Um, so if you chose the little kitty cat spoon, this hopefully that message was useful to you. And I'm going to do the llama next. Okay, if you chose the llama, we're starting out with trust. Transformation occurs through acceptance. Once you accept the current situation, it will automatically transform. Okay. So this could be trusting both sides of yourself, masculine, feminine, creative, logical, analytical, whatever. Or it could be with another person. Once you accept the current situation, it will automatically transform. This is a little bit about coming out of fear and just sort of, it's, it's sort of like one of those, when you've done everything that you can do, then there's nothing that you can do. And you just have to sit and let the energy uh, like breathe in and out a little bit. And it's not to say to give up, it's just to you know, stop trying to micromanage things that you no longer have any control over. You know, it's like, it's, it's the mental, emotional, spiritual version of you can't possibly do everything by yourself all the time. And it's a harder lesson for people that ha are very independent, whether that's through the trauma of constantly being let down or disappointed or just, you know, an innate independent thing. Um, you know, where, where it's sort of, it's where it's not so much people let you down as maybe there wasn't anybody there. Um, or somebody told you that you couldn't do it, so you're like, screw you, I'm going to do all of it. Um, but there is a certain point in life where you have to accept that you, you, you aren't able to do every single thing. You can't play every single character in your life for your entire life. Sometimes you need extras. Sometimes you need, um, supporting actors. Sometimes you need a co-lead. It's, um... And it can be very difficult. Sometimes people learn to accept help from other people through illness and injury, and that can be even more difficult. But at the end of the... Uh, I don't know why I keep saying the end of the day. I hate that phrase, and it got stuck in my brain lately. 
So the overall point is trusting that even the universe can allow things to happen sometimes. So let's look at the past. Okay. So we have the Ace of Wands inverted related to feminine energy, and that may or may not be relevant. So this is like a kick in the gut. Like all of my power taken from me. Um, I'm like a, a burnt out light bulb of a flashlight with no batteries. It was sort of complete collapse of self. All right, let's look at the present. Okay. So the present, we have Queen of Swords upright in feminine energy. And this could do with this whole trust issue. Right? I had my power stripped from me, and now I do everything myself. But it's, it's still coming from more of a feeling sensation than analytical, because we're getting a queen, and we're getting feminine energy. If you're doing it all for yourself all the time, and you're in total control, and you've got everything like clockwork watching your back, I'd expect to see a king here. Um, and it's weird, too, because with the Queen of Swords, I'd expect this sort of um, a lower vibration of... Um, sorry, my brain just started screaming Libra at me. A lower vibration of justice... And a lower vibration of the high priestess. So it's like I'm trying to make things fair for myself. By acting analytical. even in terms of feelings, because I want to balance out what's happened to me in my past when all of my power was stripped from me until I hadn't, like, my identity was demolished as a person. And that, that could be literally somebody stole your identity, which would make it hard to trust people. But it could just be like, like, I want to be this when I grow up, and then some, you're someone authority figure in your life was like no you're not because you're a piece of shit or no you're not because we don't do that or no you're not because you're getting abused instead that's where that's coming from so let's look at this future energy the nine of swords in the challenge position with masculine energy attached to it now, I'm not going to lie here, this could be somebody who doesn't trust men, doesn't trust male energy, which is why they'd be operating in the queen instead of the king. It could be the patriarchy in general, or it could be specifically male people. Um, Nine of Swords is anxiety, it's nightmares, it's fear. And we see that we're trying, in the future, we're trying to overcome that fear. What is the Nine of Swords in particular? Mars and Gemini. Okay. So Gemini is the twins. It should be, ideally, a masculine and a feminine together. Kind of like we've got here. If we're doing Gemini. Mars energy is very masculine. So in essence, we're saying I'm afraid of being together with masculine energy, which explains why this is a queen instead of a king. I also just heard in my head, turf. I don't know if I'd go so far to say this is someone who's a radical feminist, though. 
and I probably shouldn't go off about that either, but um, yeah, I think I'll just not go off on that right now because it's it's not that it's not worth it. Okay. So the outcome card says, "Beware of what you are projecting, for the qualities you admire in one another are qualities you both possess." Equally so, the qualities you don't like are also your own reflection. So then we have the masculine and the feminine together again. Now this isn't to say like, like oh, you're doing it to yourself because you don't like this part of yourself, so everyone that you don't like is a reflection of that. I know a lot of people say that, and I think that's victim blaming, and I think it's bullshit. I think what we can take from this is that everyone has masculine and feminine energy within them. And, and I think if you've been beaten down in some way, so your sense of self, this could even be, um, this could be somebody who, when they were younger, they were very balanced in their masculine and feminine energy. And this can say, I, this is being taken away from me, my identity, my whole complete identity both halves of me, both polarities, where it's like, you're not allowed to run around and climb trees. You you have to be wearing your pink dresses and playing with dolls. Or it's, you know, don't you dare touch those paper dolls. Like, you get out there and play with a monster truck or I'm going to kick your ass. So there is this sort of underlying trans energy here. But I think that's that can be more of uh it's sort of more of a polar example. You can say like um trans men, trans women, and then as you move oh my elbow cracked, as you move towards the middle of the spectrum you find people who just want to be themselves but were sort of discouraged from from basically from at this point their inner child just sort of expressing both polarities right I mean because if you think about it like a healthy child who hasn't been told not to play with things might play with Legos and dolls and stuffed animals and video games and ninja turtles and dirt you know and it kind of reminds me of um, it reminds me a little bit of Eddie Izzard because sh she was talking about how she was sort of like an action lesbian, how she would, uh, you know, running, jumping, climbing trees, and then putting on makeup once you're up there. And I think that's sort of a bigger example of what this energy is doing. And, and I think... I don't I don't think it really matters what your gender is, but it really looks like a repression and disallowing of feminine energy as equal to masculine energy, creating a sort of distrust and fear of masculine energy in a way that's it's sort of like creating a grudge, like a chip on the shoulder, but it's also creating um a separation from from self especially um, but it's also saying you know being polarized against this type of energy is polarizing you against part of your inner child and say like oh well I'm not allowed to be this well then I'm going to be the best this other thing and rule my roost from from that tower when really you want to be in sort of a central district in terms of your own energy um, so hopefully this helps uh, people in terms of perspective because there's again there's several different layers of what this could be you know it could be um, you know transphobia, homophobia affecting how people behave in society to their their own detriment, although Queen of Swords is doing alright, but we're still dealing with fear and loss of self 
It can be any person who's been cut off from any polarity of themselves. Because it doesn't have to be feminine energy. We're just saying you've been cut off from one part of your duality as a person. It could be, you know, I wasn't allowed to be the light aspect of myself, so now I'm working in darkness. Or I wasn't allowed to have a shadow side, so I had to pretend to be perfect, and now I don't, I'm afraid of the dark. Um, it could also, you know, it could be relationship stuff. Once bitten, twice, like, 45 times shy. There's a bunch of different ways that this template could be filled out. But in general, it's sort of uh, butterfly wings creating a tsunami in terms of being disallowed to be fully yourself. And not being able to make peace or connect with that other part of you that you still need to be whole or need to finish processing to move on and to become whatever you're going to be ultimately. All right, so that's the llama and we'll do the sea glass in just a second. All right, so we are on the sea glass, little tiny motherfucker over here. And our topic card here is having it easy is not a blessing with a side comment of lack of opportunity for maturity. With number 84, which may or may not be relevant. Might be your birth year, and it very well might not be. Okay, so the topic of what's being worked on is having it easy is not a blessing. Look at the past here. Hold it up here for the focus. Okay. So in the past, we have Six of Cups inverted. Six of Cups is sort of the reminiscing about the past, like, ooh, my childhood. it goes um so this very well might be the hardship was loss of childhood or like too early like i had to grow up too fast scorpionic energies usually tells me i need to go deeper this is the sun in scorpio but inverted it's bringing moon energy like secrets and fears and shadow elements. But right now I'm getting my childhood ended too early. It can also be no longer romanticizing the past. But now I have six of swords, also with two figures on it. This is sailing away from what doesn't serve me anymore and it's upright here. So I'm moving away from, like, I'm trying to analyze, like, I'm thinking through, I'm working through coming away from this trauma of having to grow up too early. Six of Swords energy, in particular, Mercury in Aquarius. All right, I'm trying to find a new perspective. Currently, what's this future card? Eight of Wands. Okay, another double feminine figure. This kind of makes me think someone's mother died early. And or I had to, I had to take care of a younger sibling. Eight of Wands is Mercury in Sagittarius. So I have Mercury here and Mercury here. 
Currently Mercury is retrograde, but this card is upright. We have something being communicated. This is usually something happening in a hurry or a message being delivered quickly. And I going from negative six to positive six, and now I'm jumping up to eight. That's like I'm trying to increase something. Sagittarius energy tells me I'm trying to move. I'm trying to go somewhere else. This is I'm trying to get away from it, and this is I'm trying to like go over here. Like I'm trying to like go over here now. Let me see what this outcome is. This might help me figure out what I'm gonna say. I haven't been sleeping well. 42, breaking down to six. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? This is a little bit more obscure. I want to get a couple more cards so I can get a paragraph as to what's going on here. So let me get a couple more for each side. Just, just for funsies. I can't really shuffle these on camera without knocking over the camera at this point. Get them over here. I'm just pick them out of the deck. No, I don't like that. I don't want that many. I call on my guides, angels, higher self, and ancestors. It's not very helpful. a couple of these just have to be difficult but you know this is something that's stemming from childhood cut off then it could be very deeply seated especially with the moon energy where stuff becomes hidden or suppressed Let's see what we've got here Protection, healing, meditation, green garnet, andradite, Pluto, and Saturn. Oh, so this is standing in for green garnet. Interesting. I'd forgotten how beautiful it is, life is, or you are. I can't make out what you're saying, and you're not seeing something or the bigger picture. Well, this is annoying. In disguise, hiding from persecution, hermit mode, or invisible. Ooh. Okay. Getting somewhere here. a little bit like somebody who went no contact with their family but now someone's trying to get a hold of them in a hurry. The union of opposites with possibly the lover's card. Now the lover's card is a six with Gemini energy and is a healing. Three things that the lovers card are. It's healing and something and lovers, but I don't remember what the third thing is. Education of tradition of the past and the realities of the present. Oh okay, 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 okay. Okay. Alright. I will tell you what this looks like. This looks like, this, for whatever reason, whether you had a parent die or other reason that you'd have to take care of a younger sibling, or, or some kind of trauma happened that created 
uh, like an alter personality because they have two figures here. What there? It's sort of like whatever has some family trauma. Whatever your family unit might be. Ended the childhood early, but also sort of like. So, like, it's kind of like be between 6 and 12 years after an initial trauma, I've been able to get the fuck away. I've got no contact. But all this, uh, but it's bothering me in my dreams, which is where that moon energy comes. And at, at some point, it's like I've suppressed the past. I don't remember it. You know, like, that's not my life anymore. I can't, I don't recall. I don't remember. And it's like, I need to have my life over here. I don't want anybody bothering me. I'm just doing my own thing. I'm not taking any, care of anyone else. I'm not taking anyone's crap. But then it's sort of like, something happens. And someone involved in that unit of people is, is like trying to get a hold of you and there's there's something that there's information that they have that doesn't make sense but will ultimately explain what the fuck went on whether it's reminding you what happened so you can clear it out or if it's like um um hypnosis what do they call that hypnotic regression if that works for you it doesn't work for me but you could have they could be through hypnotic regression or somebody contacting you that knew what was going on that has detailed information um, receipts, papers, stories um, that will it's not excuse trauma that happened necessarily but it's it will sort of take away this sort of childish question of why did this happen to me I don't understand it because having this sword energy of the the sort of analytical side of it the like this happened and then this happened and then this happened gives the it, it gives the story something to anchor to so it's like if you flush it it won't float back up And it's this education of tradition of the past and the realities of the present makes me think that there's either some sort of comeuppance or this idea that the past no longer exists and it can't really do anything to you anymore. So from whichever angle that's coming, there's this idea of resolution and the ability to finally like zoom out and see everything that was going on. So, I mean, there's some aspect of um, guides or stones or some sort of energy protection that's sort of external. That's sort of a, a side quest, like a, a, a side plot to the main deal here. Um, You know, and it's in this is this have not having having it easy is not a blessing thing seems a little bit insulting. Um, and I guess this the sort of guides and angels and higher self and this bigger picture thing and this forgotten how beautiful life is, it's kind of it goes into these higher soul aspects of what you came here to learn. And it's, it can be difficult to sort of get to a point and say, well, I wouldn't be who I am now if, if not for this and this and this. 
but it can be traumatic getting through it. And I think that's what we're seeing here. And seeing a prescription for green stones, which should help with the heart chakra. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I want to say here for this. This is a little bit more raw than what I usually get. Um, I feel like I should offer like further protection, but I think at the point of this reading in terms of what's being worked through, it seems like you have the protection. You've had the protection. the ability to excise yourself from a toxic situation in order that you could go back and eventually heal from it. Whether it's been in sort of suspended animation, sort of uh, um, catatonic dissociation for months or years or decades, um, it's opening up because it's a safe time to process it, okay? So I'm going to leave that there. Um, go after some green stones, um, sort of green feeling energy. You could wear a green shirt or eat lots of salad or put on some music that has a green kind of a feel to it, whatever that means for you, okay? So I'm going to leave it there. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. If you need more help, um, seek out professionals and or uh, if you just want some extra perspective, you can always pick a reading and I'll get you a deeper reading, like a ancestral trauma or roadblock moguls or something like that. All right. Um, so take it easy and we'll see you later. Bye. Cat the Minion Energy Work is focused on building a community around creativity and connectivity. Connect to new friends, the universe, and yourself. Shift your perspective of everyday life. Alleviate the stresses of daily life by tapping into self-expression. Help me build my offerings around your needs by investing, interacting, and brainstorming new things we can do. Your financial contributions via donations, purchases of goods and services, and participation on Patreon allow me to pay mundane bills, upgrade to better interactive services, and equipment and to buy art supplies and materials. Additionally, your support helps me pay it forward to charities, other energy workers, and artists, and to gain more visibility so our community can reach even more who need it. You can find a number of the goods and services I offer by clicking the links from my website, catthaminion.wordpress.com, or from my link tree, depending on your preference, linktr.ee slash catthaminion. I'm offering original art pieces, digital downloads, art prints, merch, tarot readings, divination tools, templates, coloring books, a dark poetry book, YouTube content, self-care encouragement, and more.